Good morning, dear hearts. Okay, we're at lesson 184, an obvious continuation of yesterday's lesson, which I hinted at at the end of yesterday's lesson. The lesson is, the name of God is my inheritance. The lesson starts and says, you live by symbols. You have made up names for everything you see. We spoke about this yesterday, that what is done in this world, in this illusion, is we take the allness that we are given, and because we are using what the uh, course and the le uh, this lesson particularly is calling partial vision, we see the everything that is, and with the use of partial limited vision, we take individual parts and pieces out of the wholeness, separate them, and give them individual names, individual lives, individual life. This is really how the separation will continue. This is the world's perception. This lesson is going to tell us that we have, we have done this and we have taken the, the totality of everything and by separating it and giving each thing a name, we have made up hundreds of thousands of names. And they become, in a sense, overwhelming. So much there is for us to learn with all of these names. It also tells us that all of these hundreds of thousands of names and things and parts and pieces, this is the world's inheritance that it's giving us. It is giving us an overwhelming amount of information. And now we have to learn it. We start as children, as babies. We start to teach our babies, this is a cup, this is a rattle, this is a, a bed, this is a toy. And this is going to go on and on and on. Now what we want to do is to simply use these symbols because they are the way of the world right now. But realizing that at some point, all of this learning is going to become overwhelming. And what will happen is we will all get to that point, as did Bill and Helen, of there has to be a better way. We have to move away from this inundation of information and different parts and pieces. There's a space within us that knows there is a unity, there is a oneness, and now I want to get there. We want to get there. This lesson says, think not you made the world. Illusions, yes. And we know that in doing this, the other part that we have done is we have denied our brother. So not only do we have all of these hundreds of thousands of objects, but we have taken the sonship and we have separated it as well. And this lesson's very interesting because it says we've twice denied the unity of our brother. Because first of all, we perceive our brother as a body and a separate entity, and we have named it. But the second part of that is, is now my brother has accepted it and answers to that. So the, uh, we are just simply separating everyone and everything out of the allness of what truly is, the totality of God. Now, here, here we go to the second part. That's a little... Um, but this, the lesson, first of all, it tells us that we need intervals of practice, which is just lovely. It says, thus you need, thus what you need are intervals each day in which the learning of the world becomes a transitory phase, a prison house from which you go into the sunlight and forget the darkness. So every day we need to have a period of respite where we leave the ways of the world and we go into the light. Now we will go back into the darkness, it says, 
and then you'll step back into the darkness, not because you think it's real, but only to proclaim its unreality in terms which still have meaning in the world that darkness rules. We are not, we are in this world, we are not of this world. We've said this many times, and this is exactly what we spoke about in my class last night, that even though we are not of this world, we are walking in it, and in order to communicate, in order to be the teachers of God that we are meant to be, we have to use the symbols of this world so that we can communicate with those who have not yet uh, or, or who are not yet ready to release all of these symbols. Now, the next uh, paragraph 12 in this is what goes, because it says God has no name. Now, we just spent the uh, yesterday calling upon God's name and upon our own, but it says his name becomes the final lesson that all things are one, and this lesson, and in at this lesson, does all learning end, and all names are unified. All space is filled. So we will use this one name and call everything by the name of God, because in doing so, we eliminate all of the extraneous names, all of the hundreds of thousands of names, and we pull everything back into oneness, and we call all of it God, and at some point, we will even release our need for calling it God. We will know that there is no name. There is no identification that is needed. There will simply be the understanding of this essence of completeness and totality and oneness. And we will realize that we are part of it and it is all God, and it is all everything, and it has no name. The end of this lesson uh, is a prayer, and um, it says, Father, our name is yours. In it, we are united with all living things, and you who are their one creator. What we made and call by many different names is but a shadow we have tried to cast across your own reality and we are glad and thankful we were wrong all our mistakes we give to you that we may be absolved from all effects our errors seemed to have because in truth they had no effect and we accept the truth you give in place of every one of them your name is our salvation and escape from what we made your name unites us in the oneness which is our inheritance and peace, amen. And the one last thing, because I know this is long today, the one last thing I want to mention, there's a line, a phrase in this lesson, and it's repeated multiple times throughout the course, and it is so reassuring because it says, no one can fail. So take that in that even if this is seeming difficult and you don't quite understand all of these concepts because it's so different from the thinking of the world, ultimately, no one can fail. So I hope this helped. Uh, please like, please share, please subscribe, uh, please comment, and um, please be here tomorrow. Namaste.